Award-winning film director Bill Maloney was shooting a documentary on the streets of New York when he first heard about the investigation of child abuse and possibly murder at the Jersey Island Children's Home, Haute de la Garanne. Bill was brought up in the care of the British establishment, as were the rest of his family, all of whom were abused, be it physically, psychologically or sexually. Bill's decision to fly to Jersey on his return from New York came as no surprise to all of us here that work at Pine Lash Films. In this documentary, he tries to condense a bigger picture into the smaller frame that is often shown to the public. Or as Bill puts it, sometimes simple things can expose everything. Let me emphasize again, um, whatever else, we have dead, we have a dead child or dead children in that cellar. Now we don't know yet how they got there, we don't know how they died, but we do know that within that cellar there is at least one dead child and maybe more. And, and, and anybody that wants to denigrate that or to try and minimize that, then I would ask them to look at themselves. It may turn out in the end uh, that the death happened elsewhere, it may turn out that it happened a long, long time ago. Let's hope that is indeed the case. But at this moment in time, we cannot say that, and until we do our inquiries, we can't rule it out. And, and as I say, I would ask everybody again who are having uh, an attack at our victims, an attack at the credibility of this inquiry, to remember the work that our staff are doing in there, what they're finding, the evidence that they're finding, and, and to have the welfare of the victims uh, at the forefront of their minds. This is Bill Maloney speaking for Pie Mesh Films from the island of Jersey. I'm here investigating the um, allegations of torture, murder um, and child sex abuse in the children's home Haute de la Gorane. Um, I've just landed and it's incredible that the horrors that have been going on on this island it is so beautiful. It's um, it, it, it's a stunning place, it's a rich place, and I think it's a greedy place. I've already been um, asked by a few people that look very establishmentarian to me where I'm staying, but I won't let them know, um, you know, I'm fannying them as we say in London. Now I've got a small crew with me, it's just myself, Lily and Darren. Now Lily's on the camera most of the time, so most of the stuff we're doing has to be covert because of um, the obvious sensitivity of it. Now this is uh, this island is broke up into what's called states. That is the um, political sort of makeup of the place, um, and their politicians are called senators. Um, the island is not owned by the UK, though it is under its protection. The island is in fact owned by the Crown and the head of this island is called Frank Walker and there have already been some very, very, very strange and nasty allegations about Mr Walker. As you get off the plane, there are plaques for all Masons who come here, come and um, have dinner here, come and support us here, you're all welcome. Freemasonry is a very, very secretive society. Um, the all seeing eye, the pyramid, um, you know, and what they believe is you must help um, another member no matter what. And you swear an allegiance to that, which is beyond reproach. Uh, so um, I'm wishing myself luck, I'm wishing Lily luck, I'm wishing Darren luck, and I'm wishing Pie and Mesh films luck. I'm just going to lay some flowers in respect if I can. Um, I hope the police are going to be all right with me, you know, and not give me any um, resistance. Um, you know. <sighs> right.
there we go. Now, there's this other place next door, now I don't know whether I should fucking do that or not, alright? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna be going there quickly, in and out. Okay. Okay, Lil. Right, Darren, give me that. You got it. Give me the flowers. We was just going over to um, take some flowers. We're at Hope de la Garanne, and he's just uh, just a mark of respect, really. Bill was brought up in care himself, and so were his brothers and sisters, um, which were abused themselves. Fortunately, Bill wasn't. Um, this is quite traumatic for Bill. So, uh, everything seems to be all right at the moment. They seem to have let him lay him without any problems, which is good, so we wish him all the best. Okay. Yeah. Keep it going. I've done that for all my family, my brothers and my sisters, and for Pine Mesh Films. Right. Now I'm working. That was with respect. Now I'm working. I'm taking you to a place that I discovered yesterday. Um, if I can remember it. Um, I just want to show you how close it is. There it is. Right, so I've been driving now um, on the clock, I suppose, if I can put a clock on the screen when we get it. I'm driving to a hospital, and I would say that I've travelled about three quarters of a mile, and I'm travelling at 30 miles an hour. Here's the entrance to it. Turn round, Lily. And now, get the shot. In 1868, St Saviour's Residential Mental Hospital was opened. In 1962, a child resident of Haute de la Garanne was told by a psychiatrist that if he repeated his allegations of sex abuse, he would be sent to the mental hospital. What is terrifying to me... Now turn it back on me, Leon, and come out my window. This is a mental institution with chronically um, sick mental patients, residents. Now, I came here yesterday and um, saw this place and realised how close it was to Haute de la Garanne. And I'm wondering now how many children were sent here as well, um, whether they drugged them or whatever, you know. We've got to be careful what we say. Don't turn it off, just get out with me. You stay there, Darren. Have a little run with me, Lil. Now, this is a mental institution. They have some uh, very sick people here. Now, we look, came here yesterday, and um, when we looked through one of the windows, this is what we saw. Give me the camera. I'm taking the camera off of Lily. This is what I'm looking at through the window. This is a mental institution. I do not know what this is. Let me just show you. This is through the window. Let me show you. There's no trick photography. There's Lily, my camera woman, and this is the building. Okay, Lil, do you want to take it back off me? Let me just show you all this one more time. This is what is, um, this is a figure that is standing on the windowsill in this um, mental institution. Uh, you'll be aware that on the 17th of April, uh, we went into uh, cellars three and four, and the first thing we did in that uh, cellar was to put in the uh, human remains dog uh, in the cellar uh, to show up potentially if there were uh, any indications in there of uh, human remains or blood. Um, as you probably all know, the dog reacted uh, very strongly in there, uh, has, as has been the case uh, in a number of instances uh, throughout the operation here at Hotel de uh, We then started excavating uh, the cellar areas. Uh, cellars three and four, I should point out that uh, <clears throat> up until a few years ago were actually all one room. Uh, since the 
17th of April, uh, material has been taken out of the cellar and a sieving operation is, is ongoing uh, to the left of the uh, property as you look behind the tents there. Up until yesterday morning, we had taken out uh, of the material which was being sieved there uh, six uh, teeth which have been uh, positively identified uh, by at least one odontologist and in fact three of them have been positively identified by two odontologists as children's milk teeth. We also had taken out uh, 20 uh, pieces of what we believe uh, to be human bone uh, and more accurately uh, the bone of either one or more human children. Uh, up to the present time uh, I think nine of those have been uh, confirmed in one or two laboratories in the United Kingdom as indeed being the bones of a human or human children. Yesterday uh, the sieving operation moved into the material which had been taken out of a narrow uh, strip of ashy uh, soil and substance and in that area yesterday alone <clears throat> the team who are searching the material found another ten pieces of bone which they believe to be uh, of human origin. Amongst these uh, were two bones which showed a quite clear and definite mechanical fit when, when placed alongside each other. Now as you know we have sent uh, some of the bones off the UK for DNA and for uh, testing. Uh, we got the first uh, dating uh, back the, this morning and it's fair to say that the information that we're getting from the experts in the UK at this moment in time uh, is conflicting uh, so much that it leaves us in a situation where we now have to uh, move forward to where we send all of our uh, pieces of bone to the United Kingdom. Rolling. This is Bill Maloney for Pine Mash Films. I'm on the island of Jersey and I'm one mile away from Oak de la Goran where all the child molestations and possible murders went on. Now this is what I've seen outside the front of a house. Lily's going to go and check it out. Go and check it out. Show the, I'm going to show you what it is and then I'm going to tell you what we see. Now, this is one mile from Oak de la Garand. Talk about insensitive. Um, this is, um, stand where you are, stand where you are. This, um, we have to do this very covertly. These people are fucking crazy around here. Now, we have a baby, looks like a boy, a little boy, crouched, naked, sucking a fucking cock with a baseball cap on. Next to that boy is a baby. It is a baby doll that's turned so you can see the bare ass. And then, next to that, you've got a chimpanzee, and next to that, you've got an eagle. What the fuck is this? It's all about. That's Bill Maloney of Pie and Mesh Films from Jersey, Oak de la Grand. Now look at all this. What is going on here? That's fucking witchcraft, isn't it? That's fucking witchcraft. There's a fucking chimpanzee, there's a baby fucking, looks like a baby sucking a cock, and then there's an eagle next to it, and then there's another baby. Look at that baby, the other baby with a hat on and the bare ass. What is wrong with these people? Let's go. I'm a student filmmaker Hi. and I just wanted to know your views on Hope de la Garand and the story that's involved I'd with all the children. Involved. Thank you. Alright, thanks. Excuse me, what do you have to say about Hope de la Garand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry to disturb you. I'm a student filmmaker and I just wanted to know if any of you had anything to say about Hope de la Garand and the story that's, an, that's been um, sorry, reported in the media. English. You don't speak English? No, no. Alright. Film student maker no. and I wanted to know if I had anything to say about Hope de la Garand. No. Nothing to say at all. Excuse me, sorry to stop you there. I'm a student filmmaker and I wanted to know if you had anything to say on Hope de la Garand. Uh, no, I don't really. You don't? No, I'm not really bothered about it. You're not bothered about it? Stuart said, right, he came up with this years ago. Yeah. He's held them. Yeah. And um, they took no notice. In fact, they sacked him. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. It's yeah. the corruptness that's involved yeah. in all of this. Yeah. The big cover up. This whole island is corrupt. The whole island is corrupt. Yeah, that is. <laughs> you look at, look at the way this place is rough. No. Yeah. No. They don't, they don't look after their own anymore. And, do you know, it's just the way that they work things. Everything. Yeah. Do you know, even like the police force, everything. They cover up everything. Yeah. Do you know, it's not on. Not when people get hurt like that. No, like, not at all. It's just disgusting. Yeah. Sorry to stop you there. Um, I'm a student filmmaker and I wanted to know if you had anything to say on Hope de la Garand. You know, the children's home. Um, 
Well, I think Jersey's been unlucky, and there's many places rather like this around the world. Yeah, so it's not just Jersey itself, you're Definitely saying. Not. Anything to say about Hope de la Garenne? Um, we're on holiday, so I don't know much about it. Yeah. Apart from something, um, they found a skull or there was a few Yeah. Home or something. But it hasn't stopped you from coming over here, though, no? No. No, we no. come over here all the time. No, it happens. Unfortunately, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Um, we come from Guernsey, Guernsey. Yeah. And not so much, but you hear about things over there. Yeah. Um, so, no matter where it is. There's abuse. It's very sad and it shouldn't happen, but there's abuse everywhere. Mm. Do you not have nothing to say about how to look around? No, I don't think you stop it. Sorry to disturb you, I'm a student filmmaker. I want to know if you have anything to say about Hope de la Garin. Nothing at all? I'm a student filmmaker. Yeah. I just want to know if you have anything to say about Hope de la Garin. I haven't. No, I'm sorry. Nothing at all? No. I'm a student filmmaker. I want to know if you have anything to say about Hope de la Garin. I can't say nothing about nothing. Sorry, my friend. Why is that? Because I don't want to talk about nothing. You best go off the states. Or off the police. Okay? Right, we just had to make a, a quick escape from St Helia. Um, Darren was asking some people on the street what they thought about the um, goings on with Hope de la Guaran. Um, and um, there was one guy, especially, who got really quite aggressive, tried to put his hand into the camera, um, told Darren to, like, you know, more or less fuck off, don't want to talk about nothing. Um, and then he turned his attentions to a police officer. Um, and I was covering Darren on the street. So I got Darren the fuck out of there. Uh, worked a little bit like pickpockets, really. We gave Lily the, uh, she took the cameras, and me and Darren went for a walk. I got him to um, take his coat off and uh, wrap it around his waist, like so, and uh, shot into his shop and bought him a hat, you know, because he's quite distinctive looking. And we managed to get back to the car park reasonably uh, safely, you know, Lil lost her way a little bit, but here we are. Right, well, as you could see, they didn't want to talk to Darren, they didn't want to talk to no one. And the, um, you know, one of the, the excuses that I'm hearing from people on this island is that, oh, it all happened such a long time ago. Well, if it all happened such a long time ago, why are people so concerned, frightened even, to talk about it? So, we're going to go and have a, a little, uh, cup of tea or something and um, then uh, we're going to put yours truly on the fucking street and see if anyone will talk to me. I'm going to be a little bit more abrasive with these people. So let's see how we go. What I would say is that what is causing us some concern uh, is that one or two of the bones uh, are showing signs of uh, uh, being uh, part of a, an unexplained death and in fact uh, one or two of them are showing signs of a potential uh, circumstances which might infer a homicide in that some of the bones have been cut. Um, now I say that and, and I emphasize again that this does not mean that at this present moment we are launching a homicide inquiry. We need to get further tests done on the bones and, and we need to try and as best as we can get them established. You got it? Can you see can you see now how they turned it around, how blatant this is? We're just a mile from Oak de la Grand. You got it, Lil? You zoomed in on it? Yeah. Now look at that strange face on that kid. And that kid is now they've turned it around so it's holding its prick. This is a mile from Oak de la Grand in Jersey. You got it, Lil? Yeah. Do you want to tell? Right. Give Darren the camera, Lil. This place is one mile from Oak de la Garand. Now, I have just um, uh, witnessed um, something that is so fucking scary and evil. That is fucking evil to me. Um, and they've turned the child round. You know, when I showed you the shot before, it was bad enough. Um, but now they turn the child round and um, the child is holding its its fucking prick and, and got a dirty, rude smile and like an almost sort of um, toothless grin on its face. Now this is, I, you know, I keep saying it, it is a mile from Haute de la Garand where these children were abused. Well, what, what I, you know, I don't, fucking hell, I feel like jumping out the fucking window. 
Uh, Senator Serve, when you um, have had allegations of difficulties, for example, there was one example cited in that piece we saw a moment or two ago, have you had the impression they've been treated seriously? It depends upon the occasion. Some occasionally uh, incidents have been treated very seriously, um, other, others have not. And certainly some instances that were serious and even recognized internally by various departments were not actually reported upon to the relevant authorities. Certainly um, I was put in touch with information by whistleblowers that was withheld from me as the minister um, for a, a, a long time. So there clearly has been a culture of cover-up here and I agree absolutely with uh, Esther Radson. What matters here is the children and I think what we have to do is recognize that we have failed, the system has failed in Jersey to protect vulnerable children for decades and we've got to look at the systemic failures within our public administration that let that happen. You think the system has failed? Indeed the system has failed. Um, uh, the, the, the community is a good community good people in it, but I'm afraid the inherent structural weaknesses in our system of government and in our establishment have led us to this. Uh, Mr. Walker, that's a pretty serious accusation that there's been a structural failure of the system there. Well, there is no evidence to support that, and let me say that Jersey has a we've record a, we've got, here we've, we've, we've got of got a being, of being a very, a very law-abiding community and a record going back centuries of democratic government and of prosecuting offenders vigorously in our courts. And that's yeah, exactly what we will do in yes, this situation. Esther Ransom, this, just, this hang on just a second, Mr. Walker. Esther Ransom wants to ask you something. Go on. Mr. Walker, can I just say to you that when a child is suffering in the way these children suffered, in a culture of abuse, in an institution where they have nowhere to turn because they think everybody working within that institution knows what's going on and is conspiring to keep them silent using any means. We've heard about punishment, intimidation and so on. What has to happen is the whole community has to be very aware that they have got to look after those children. You've got to let fresh air in. You've got to let visitors in. You've got to set up a specific system that allows those children to disclose. It's not about whether Jersey is a wonderful place, because I'm sure it is. It's not about whether Jersey people are law-abiding. It's about paedophiles and child abusers seeking out the most vulnerable children and silencing them while they do these terrible crimes. Mr. Walker? Esther, I agree, I agree entirely, but we're looking back here at situations 30 or 40 years ago. Never the, nevertheless... That doesn't minimize Jersey them, does will, it? No, of course it doesn't, but that's what I'm saying. Jersey will bring anyone who has perpetrated one of these horrible crimes and who may have um, conspired in a cover-up, we will bring them vigorously to justice and they will feel the full weight of our courts which is equally um, weighty to that in the UK. All right, Sad, gentlemen, sadly, and sadly. Esther, OK, I'm sorry, we must end it there. Thank you both, and thank you, Esther Ransom, very much. This is Bill Maloney speaking for PMS Films. I'm on the island of Jersey. I'm outside the state's offices. Um, this is uh, today's headline on the Jersey Evening Post. No jail for child porn downloader. Suspended sentence of six months after police lose hard drive evidence. Well, the police lost the evidence here on the Isle of Jersey. Uh, surprise the fucking prize. Now, this guy, um, Stephen Edward Ficino, 22, was given a six-month suspended sentence for downloading 4,000 images of um, children and also um, uh, putting up on the internet um, his suggestions and his uh, method of um, grooming children for paedophiles. This is the state's chambers. Um, after what's been happening, this is how they are building confidence in the community. Now, if this was a fucking uh, a guy up for drinking, they would try and make uh, being drunk and disorderly or something like that. I'm sure that they would try and make an example of him. So, uh, uh, you know, you people at the States, especially you, Mr. Walker, why don't you make an example of these people? Yes, thank you very much. This is one very fucking angry filmmaker. Bill Maloney signing off, and we are slightly concerned because we're being followed here. This is Bailiff, Sir Philip Bellhack, 
has rejected calls for him to resign over the appointment of a convicted paedophile. However, Sir Philip has admitted he should not have allowed Roger Holland to join the honorary police in 1992. Holland, 42, went on to assault three girls whilst a serving officer. He was jailed in April 2008 for two years, prompting the father of one of his victims to call for the bailiff to quit. Sir Philip was Attorney General at the time of Holland's appointment and was informed he had been convicted of indecently assaulting a 14-year-old girl, but decided to allow him to keep his post. There are allegations that Sir Philip Bowhack was the governor of Haute de la Garenne for a number of years during the 70s or 80s. What do you think of Walker? Wanker. Wanker. <laughs> Say that again. What do you think of Walker? Wanker. Well done, mate. Nice. So you get respect for that. You see, there seem to be a lot of people frightened of this guy. Mm. Now, you know what a nonce is? Yeah. Right. Now, what it is, I ain't saying that. Yeah. The people are saying it. Yeah. I've been to New York, I've been to America, they're saying it. In England, and I'm not just talking about a little bit, all over England, all over England, they're saying anyone in Jersey, and why ain't these people helping these kids out? That's what they want to know. Now, I'm not patronising you, but you're the kids. So, you're married. Let me just give you a little scenario, hypothetical, right? I was going to say, like, oh. Right, Danny, <laughs> Danny, you're a married man, you've got two kids, right? Yeah. You and your partner, you are in a fucking fatal car crash. Your kids have to go into the care of this island. How do you feel? Gutted. At the minute. But you, it don't really matter because you're dead. Yeah. And if you're dead, they can do what they want with them, can't they? Absolutely. But all these kids are being dragged from the lower working classes, Daniel. Yeah? Yeah. That's it. So, now I've spoken to you, now you go and do what you've got to do, chaps. No, just... OK? Nice. Yeah, it's just, been a pleasure. Just me. Right. Bill Maloney for Pine Mesh Films, talking from Jersey to the fucking world. Now. Um, those kids I was just talking to, we was right outside the state's offices, which is the equivalent to the Houses of Parliament. Um, we had a very sort of rough, leery fucking security guard, like a neck as thick as this coming out looking, but didn't actually look at us. And then we've got all the state's people, they're all hanging out at the window and they're all looking at us as well. So, and really in quite an intimidating way. Um, the kids, I can't find one person who likes this fucking prick walker. No one. Now let them come and get me, if they want to come and get me. But so, now we're on our toes proper, because we've done this interview with these kids outside the state building, pucker kids, and I don't want people thinking that everyone in Jersey's a fucking nonce. That's what I do not want. I want, let them go and attack them people. They're going to attack them people, let them attack them people. All right? Don't attack the kids, don't attack the people who've got fuck all to do with it. You know what I mean? Let's go, Mr. Walker, you've got to stand up in court one day, son. Yeah, oh yeah, you have. What do you think of Walker, chaps? What do you think of Walker? Uh, I'm not going to comment if you're going to put that on YouTube. What do you think? Do you like him? What do you think about Mr. Walker? Um, well, I don't really, I'm not into all the politics kind really, but from what I've heard, I, you hear stories like it's a small island, like you say, you know? Yeah, what stories? Uh, I don't really want to say too much, like, but... Why? What are you frightened of? Not a lot, but... Just, well, this is, I don't really, it, all right? I've heard is some people, well, a lot of people don't like him, really. Now, what I would say, Mark, if you had two kids, right, here, mm. and you would say you was with your partner, and you was in a, a fatal car crash, God forbid, it doesn't mean that your kids, Mark, would go straight to their grandparents. Nine times out of ten, they would go straight into care. Yeah. How would you feel about putting your kids into the care of Jersey um, children's homes? Uh, not too good at the moment. That's it? Nah, definitely not. That's it. So we all feel the same as well. Yeah. So. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and to you, mate. Yeah. Uh, seriously, Mark. So, um, anyway, and it, oh, look at the pub, the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales pub. So this is where, uh, see, put it on me. See you, Your Majesty. This is where you come, don't you? And um, avoid your taxes, isn't it? Uh, you've got all your money out here, ain't you? Uh, and now, all your establishment, they're after me and young Lily here, you know what I mean? So we all go like, bang, 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 bang. Alright, chaps. Alright, chaps, what do you think of Walker? Come. A what? Come here. Oh! I'll just have them all, we, we had to do like a quick escape and the, 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 the offices around here, you know what I mean, your, your parliament, anyway. And because um, I was talking to four guys, I'm a filmmaker, this is really breaking in England, do you, do you realise this, oh, chaps? I realise, I saw the panorama thing. But the fucking panorama thing, that, that way, that's for pussycats. Never mind about the panorama thing. Now, do you know who owns this island? <laughs> Frank Walker. No, well, Frank Walker. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. It's, who, who owns this island? Come on, you, you, you who owns it? Yeah. Who owns it? Owns it? Well, states. The states own the island. Yeah. Okay. So who do you think owns the island? Well, I'd have to say Walker because he's got the politicians in his pocket. So, you so he gets the laws passed. So fuck it, it's Walker. Right.
guessing it's Britain, is it? No, it's not. No. The UK doesn't own this island. Well, not the UK, no, just Britain. Well, it's independent. The Crown. Yeah. So. The Queen. Yeah. The Queen? Yeah. This is where the Queen brings her money to avoid her taxes. What we do with all these taxes, you know all these people who come here to avoid their taxes, right? What we do with that money, when they not, when, if they would pay their taxes, it would go to the National Health Service, to your National Health Service, and to social services, etc., to help people that ain't got a chance, as good a chance as maybe you three lively looking chaps have. You know what I mean? Seriously, I mean, oh, I know, I know, because I come from fuck all. You know what I mean? The first one up in the morning used to get the shoes in my house, you know? So this is very Masonic, this island, anyway. They're talking about initiation ceremonies for these, and sacrificing children. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that, that they're saying these children were being groomed. But money attack happens in more than places than just shows. Oh, well, I know that, but you are highlighted at the moment. Now, I've got your attention now, haven't I? I'm just telling you what people are saying. Not what I'm saying, what people are saying to me. At the end of the day, aren't they? But people do do that. They do stereotype people, you know what I mean? But yeah. if this guy, everyone says, everyone I've asked, right, what it is, everyone I've said, what do you think of Walker? They'll go, we don't like him, we don't. But why is he doing what he's doing? Why is he still there? Why don't you go and get him out and drag him out of there? You know he's retiring anyway, so it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, you I'm said, not saying it's fair what he's done, but mm. if he's quitting out of so, states, it's not what you're doing. So, well, if you're saying that, so if you, you know, like Nazi war criminals that were. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I don't see the point <laughs> no, of this I'm documentary. Saying, he's retiring no, anyway. No, I'm just it's saying not. to you, with Nazi war criminals, do you agree that going to get Nazi war criminals that were responsible for the Holocaust, do you think that's fair to do that? It's not the same of course thing, it though, is. is it? You Why can't put it in the same ballpark. Why not? This is Because he's not directly responsible for it. He's just. How do you know? How do you know? Some people are saying He's a boy. Well, I'm quite comfortable with being accused of carrying out a personal vendetta against child abusers. I don't think I shall lose any sleep over that. And uh, I, d I don't want to spend too much time talking about that small minority of um, politicians who um, have been criticising the inquiry at almost every opportunity, most of it based on false information. People have sometimes asked him, do you think you might um, yield to any pressure on this investigation? I, I think that question can only be seen as a joke by those who know Lenny. There has never been the slightest prospect of him succumbing to inappropriate pressure from any direction. The Royal Bank of Scotland seem very predominant here on Jersey, very predominant. And so are the Scots as well, there's loads of them here. Um, the cab driver, when I first um, came from the airport, who picked us up, um, he was a, a Scotsman, he'd been here for 36 years, and apparently you can't just come here and buy property, so he couldn't do that, he couldn't come and buy property, so he's still renting. Um, and then when I started talking about the, um, the child molestation charges, etc, etc, or allegations if you like, um, he started saying that he thinks that they're blowing it all out of proportion. Well, I don't think that killing fucking children and uh, torturing them once you've got them away from the uh, safety of their parents, whether their parents have been like, I don't know, like uh, just left them or been killed in uh, road crashes, etc, etc. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't let anyone um, from this government here, or the states as they call it, I mean, I think the fucking states are in what we would say, call a state, a right state. There's something very strange going on here, and um, I really do believe that. And when I came here, I did come here with an open mind. Um, but when you talk to people, it's like they want to have a go at me. I'm just asking people randomly on the street. I'm not filming them all, but not one person has said to me, he's all right, we like Walker. Everyone said, the, the last kid said he's a cunt. You know, that's, uh, you know, from a middle class uh, kid, you know. Um. So here we go, RBS and Coops together. So, Your Majesty. How much taxes should you be paying towards our poor people in England to the National Health Service? You know what I mean? And see these dark forces. Are these dark forces that Paul Burrell was talking about anything to do with child molestation or, or worse, sacrificial, um, you know... I, I, I don't even want to think about that. I, I just feel fucking terrible here. And I, don't, I think you'll find a... At the end of the day, he's working for other people because he's not he's not top dog here. I think it goes higher than that, and it's going. We're talking about aristocracy. Did you know his wife left him and went to England? She used to beat her. Which wife was what? that? He's put his wife in hospital. What? He's put his wife in hospital. He used to put his wife in hospital. Oh yeah. Seven kills the shit out of her. She, she, he ended up uh, getting a private plane and flying her off to an English hospital. There was a big hoo-ha, wasn't there? Yeah, about and two of our senators his, spoke up uh, about it and that's who put a retraction in the paper. He used to beat his wife yeah. and she left him because of that. So yeah. where is she now? She's still on she's, his island? No, she's, she's on the mainland, I think. She's still in Jersey. Is she? Yeah.
Yeah. That's your name. Yeah. Well, the one is married to you now. She's a black and blue. News reader on telly. And he was oh, a taxi. The one is married to now. She used to be a news reader on, on our telly. But he don't beat her. Which was the one with the bottle? Was that? No, that was that young girl. The what bottle? The doctor's daughter. Yeah. Um, forget but, her name. But who was who, who was? She the, was a news reader as well. Yeah, but who was using the bottle? Right. What oh, bottle? Tell me that. A girl ends yeah. up having to go to the hospital with a bottle like somebody's panty. Yeah. So, he could, yeah. Who done that? And is a couple of his mates had a party one night, got her fish. How, how old is she? Spoke for, right? I don't know. Again, is it? But with the suction and all the rest of it, with an open bottle, oh, yeah. it didn't come out, eh? I don't know. I'm going to have to hit all these blokes, all these panty marbles. You put a bottle like somebody's panty, you try and pull it out, you've got the suction of it. And that was and his mates. So. And his mates had a party one night, stuck a bottle up, yeah. this girl's, and she she's disappeared. Yeah. And this this guy is. Yeah. Someone told me that like, there's a lot of police officers walking about around here, like in um, incognito. Oh, of course that. there is. We've got yeah. dozens of them. Dozens of them. They don't dozens. like wearing a uniform. I ain't seen many uniforms. No. I tell you what, you go out around we town, don't. <laughs> we don't see them. We've got, over, we've got nearly 400 paid police. And we can go for a drive in the evening. Around the countryside, something we're out around the island. We'll do 40 miles just for mm. a drive around. Yeah, mm. we want you one police car. Where are they all? I think there's a few of them watching me. Yeah. It's very difficult to find things out, man. Well, you know, like I told you, all the people I've been talking to, but you three people have been the most honest and straightforward people since I've been well, out there's here. There's no point in being anything else, is there? Really? No. Well, if you want to get rid of people, then that's all you got to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm more interested in the kids who can't defend themselves, mate. Yeah. Anyway, love yous. Lovely to meet you. Bye-bye. Yeah. I'm at a place called the Devil's Hole. Now I've come here, I've pulled up, it's a watering hole, and there's a statue. Um, I'm going to get Lily to shoot it and show you in a minute. And it must be at least, um, I would say, about 12, 13 foot high. And it is standing in a sort of a pond. And it looks like, well, let's, let's just show it. It's the Devil. Now let's have a little zoom, easy, just till he's in frame, now let's get on his face, too much sky, let's get right on his face, oh, oh, okay let's zoom back out and then come on me Lily, that's the devil. Now, fuck knows why anyone would want to do that. I mean, that really is, you know, I was in the pub um, having a piss and a Red Bull with Darren and Lily's um, come right. This is very, very fucking scary. And I really just do not see the point of this. And this is like on the island of Jersey, um, you know, where, where people are talking about witchcraft child abuse and sacrificing children and the aristocracy are um, allegedly involved and this is a very very strange place and even as I stand here I feel that the wind is building up and um, now I'm a friend of Jesus Christ Um, in the meantime, as I say, the, the other indications that, uh, that, that are causing us some concern in there is that a lot of uh, the bones appear to have uh, some degree of uh, burning to them. And a, a number of them have been found in and around where we believe, in fact, where the experts are saying there was uh, a fireplace uh, in that cellar area uh, at, at one time. 
I would also ask you to remember, and it does, it has tended to uh, be forgotten uh, when we're talking about what's been uh, found at Haute de la Garonne, that Haute de la Garonne is not only uh, the scene uh, of a search for potential human remains, uh, uh, which has been, I've got to say, uh, instigated by witnesses who have uh, led us here in, in that respect, but Haute de la Garonne is also the scene of a forensic examination and a forensic search and that examination and search has yielded uh, a large number of bits of evidence which totally corroborate uh, the witness statements of some of our victims. And I've seen in some quarters of the media in the last few days some of our victims uh, being harangued and criticized for having criminal offenses. And, uh, and I think that is totally and utterly contemptible and outrageous. Uh, some of these people have got criminal offences because of what happened to them. Uh, the fact that they've got criminal offences is neither here nor there. They have seen fit to come forward and talk to the police. They've spoken to us and told us their experiences and I think it is absolutely disgraceful that they are being labelled and discouraged in this way. It is doing this inquiry no good whatsoever and, and as I've said we are absolutely flabbergasted by it and I would call on those who are making those sort of allegations and those sort of insinuations to stop it now. I'm um, Gory Castle, and over that hill is Haute de la Garonne, um, which is, uh, you know, as you can see, this is an opulent place. And um, I'm going to take you for a little ride now, and I'm going to show you the kind of place that this is, and to put a children's home um, from, you know, the kids from working class areas, uh, you know, from England as well, from all over the place. You know, my sister, who was brought up in care, as all my family, she was brought here on a sailing trip. And apparently that's where a lot of the abuse took place, actually, with the sea cadets, I've been told. Um, you know, things that are coming out on the net. So, um, the opulence of the place, you know, why put working class children here? You know, we know what the rich are like, we know what they're like, they don't want working class children around them. They just don't. And I'll tell you what, I'm really fucked up with people saying, yeah, but that all happened in 1986. 86, 96, 2006. It's fuck all, is it? It was going on in the time of Thatcher. And it's been going on in the reign of this Queen. For the last 50 years, there has been abuse on this fucking island and throughout Europe. And I believe that it is down to the children are the sacrificial lambs. Now, I also found out this morning that in 2004, a guy was um, told that he could practice Satanism in the Navy. Now, at that time, he was a petty officer. Since then, 2004, he has been promoted to the MOD in Whitehall. Now, you know, his, uh, on, a, on a, um, a blog on the internet, what they're saying is that I, I got this morning from London, from our producer, is um, the excuses, Satanism is for those people who don't believe in God. Now, if you don't believe in God, it means that you can use Satanism just to earn a lot of money or to um, get a nice house and get on personally in life. Now. You know, I don't think practicing Satanism would be too good for those people who have got children that are proper people. So therefore, um, Satanism obviously involves um, the offering up of children to Satan. So this guy has been fucking promoted to Whitehall and they changed the law so that it, uh, Satanism can be now practiced in the Navy. Prince Philip was in the Navy. Prince Charles was in the Navy. Andrew was in the Navy. Rolling. Right. Once again, we're going back to where the fucking... the nonce puts out the dolls. I'm going to show you something. He's done something. This is uh, the third day that we've been to see this. I'm really angry. Okay. Now, today, get the shot, today, the little boy today has got pigtails instead of the baseball cap 
of yesterday. So now, let's go. So now, the little boy sucking the cock has become a little girl sucking the cock. Now this is all one shot, and I'm gonna show you how close we are to Hope de la Goran. Now I can't understand why that person, that guy, who I have seen um, and, and was gonna approach, but I didn't trust myself because I, would, I wanted to fucking knock him out. And I could have fucking knocked him out because I've got boxing skills. But it's not gonna do the kids any good. Now I'm driving at 30 miles an hour, I've just shown you that horrific sight. This is, that is the third fucking thing we've shown you, the third time I've been there. And uh, I'm losing it a little bit, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> just a little bit, I'm losing it. Now I'm going to show you, this is all one shot, no edits, no dodgy edits here. This ain't the fucking BBC, this is Pie and Mash Films. We're not protected like the BBC. I'm taking you to Hope de la Grande. And I'm going to show you just exactly how close that place is to it. Now I'm hitting traffic lights and they're on red. What a fucker. Right, we've changed. <clears throat> Ransom's Garden Centre is on my right. We're just going through a filter traffic light. I'm looking for the turning of Haute de la Grande. Remember, this is all one shot. I'm travelling no it's faster left. than 30 it's miles left. an hour. I'm being told by Lily <clears throat> that it's this left. Here we go. Still 30 miles an hour. We've just left that fucking horrific sight. And I've been putting I put laid flowers here, here it comes. I am absolutely fucking mortified. And here is the fucking police officer on my right. There you go. That's how close it is. Did we get it, Lil? Yep, we got it. What is going on here? My daughter used to wear Pigtails like that. The name of the house was Charn Wood. Am I right? Yeah. Yep. Charn Wood. Mm -hmm. It was a massive investigation. The digging went on for weeks, and the allegations were lurid. That evidence suggested children were killed, burnt, and buried within this building. And yet today, all this was entirely discredited. The partial remains of a child or the potential remains of a child uh, isn't human, that there aren't any cellars and dungeons, the floor voids, that the bone that's been found, they're just very small fragments and three of them are possibly human, dating to many hundreds of years ago. We feel comfortable in coming out today and saying there is no evidence or indication murders have taken place at Holt de this is just one of those items described by police at the time as a set of shackles which correlated with witness statements of abuse at the home. Police now say it's simply a bit of rusty metal and along with all the other items is in no way connected to the inquiry. International attention focused on the island back on February the 23rd when police said they'd found the partial remains of a child's skull at the home. Scores of people came forward claiming to have been abused there and police found bricked up cellars now said simply to be voids. The following day they announced they'd found a blood-stained bath and the set of shackles. Almost two months later officers confirmed they'd found dozens of children's teeth and bone fragments. These they said on May the 21st could suggest homicide. A series of damning errors all made police now say by this man Lenny Harper in charge of the investigation until his retirement in August. We put the allegations to him. The person who's taken over from you said to me the other day, Lenny Harper is a problem. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, I don't know what he's meant for that. I mean, he, he's, he's been in Jersey three, four weeks. Um, uh, the Attorney General said I was a problem. Um, politicians said I was a problem. 
Uh, he's entitled to his opinion. We did what we felt we had to do. My team were completely happy with it. ACPO were completely happy with it. What is not disputed, though, is that abuse did take place here. That investigation continues. But those who allege the abuse are openly suspicious of the island's authorities. Today, we'll do nothing to allay those suspicions. Mark Stone, Sky News, on Jersey. Rolling. Right, listen, um, I've just had to uh, pull over and get out of the car because I need to say this on camera, you know, I nearly lost it now. Um, that place, Charnwood, is a private house. It is on the B12, which is a main drag that goes through Jersey. The opulence of the houses on that road are incredible. Why is this being allowed? I believe that this whole investigation is a farce. It is the opinion of Pine Mesh Films that the history of St Saviour's Psychiatric Hospital should be investigated in connection with Hope de la Garenne. Well, here I am, back safe and sound from Jersey. So, um, while we've got a few minutes, I, I thought I'd just, you know, sum up for you. Um, when I was in care, I was very fortunate not to get sexually abused. Um, I was one of the children that wasn't easy to manipulate, you know, I just got this thing in me, um, you know, a bit of a rebel in me, and I always have had. And um, I'm of Irish immigrant parents, so you know, there was always humour whenever I was with my dad because my mum left early. You know, my, my mum went on the game when I was four. Um, and I had, you know, quite a few um, issues with that up until about ten years ago when I actually started making films. That had a big impact on what I'd done in Jersey. Um, you know, I do believe that sometimes it's just the simple things that will highlight a bigger picture, you know, the, the sort of um, the shrine to witchcraft or whatever that was, so short a distance from this home and this story is so hot, you know, and the police must drive past there every day. Um, this sort of um, intent dislike for Mr. Walker um, and the guy Sivery or Sivery who exposed it all, you know, the, um, people are now trying to throw stones at him. And I believe that, um, you know, whatever way you look at this documentary that you've just seen, I think we'll all agree that that shrine has to come down. I also would like to see the devil taken away. Um, and the people of Jersey, in time, if the correct things are done just there, and I'm saying Jersey at the moment because it is highlighted, there's lots of other places around the world, you know, throughout Europe and God knows where else, and if we can just chip away with it, you know, and some people will say that the film actually sensationalised it, and, you know, that's, that's a good point because I thought about it myself, you know. Um, it seems a bit dramatic, but I was just showing how I felt out there. 
and trying to keep myself together. Because when I got near the children's home, you know, um, I started to hear screams and things that came back to me when I was in the institutions, you know, from children's homes to young offenders institutions and the screams that I heard at night. And some of you people that are watching this um, could have been in that position or your children may be, be in that kind of position right now. And something that is really bothering me as well with children in care, that apparently um, the staff can now um, give them a sharp blow to the nose, which means a punch on the nose actually. Now, you know, I, as a man, I, to punch a child on the nose under any circumstances is, um, is a cruel, out of touch way, you know. That's worse than the cane. You know, that is worse than the cane. Um, you know, this is a highly debatable way that I've taken to show what, whatever I have shown. And there are people that will understand it and there, there's going to be people that don't understand it. Um, but I'm not saying that, you know, I want everyone to understand it and see what I see and how I saw how I saw Jersey, and um, I saw Jersey as a place that was full of gossip, you know, but there's no smoke without fire. So that's it. I went out there and done what I had to do, you know, and um, there's many other people like me that will hear the screams in the night that they try to lock in the back of their memories or their, wherever it goes, that will now be emerging. And um, I think that the fight against all evil, and um, especially Satanism, is essential to the spiritual well-being of this planet. Dawn Lonely, Pine Mesh Films, summarising crazy, crazy, crazy place. Since a copy of Sun, Sea and Satan went to BBC Plymouth on the 19th of May 2008, the region that covers Jersey, Chief Bailiff Sir Philip Bowhack has submitted his resignation. Lenny Harper has retired from the case. Prince William has shifted from the Royal Navy to the Royal Air Force. St Saviour's Mental Hospital, Jersey, has been given listed building status and there have been stories in the UK national press of the Queen giving up her title to Prince Charles. It is the opinion of Bill Maloney that if a child was required, Hope de la Garenne was the venue. If an adult was required, St Saviour's Mental Hospital was the venue. Bill Maloney's sister, Diana, who funded Sunsea and Satan, was found dead in her home on the 12th of June 2008. Cause of death unascertained.